Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our JavaScript series. In this video, we are going to talk about what do you mean by JavaScript promises? Promise means once we make a promise to someone, then we either we can fulfill the promise or we can resolve the promise or we can reject the promise. Also, we can say that. So similar way in JavaScript also, it works. So JavaScript promises means are a way to handle asynchronous operations that we have already discussed that what do you mean by synchronous and asynchronous operations. For example, this is a synchronous operation and all the operations are running in the parallel mode. But in the synchronous mode means first the first task will be completed, then only the second task will be completed until the first task is not completed, the second task in the pending state. So to handle the asynchronous operations in a more organized and the readable manner we use promises they provide a clear syntax for dealing with asynchronous code compared to the traditional callback based approach so the syntax wise it will be very simple easy to write and then easy to understand also and in a better more organized way and the readable manner we can write and we can handle all the asynchronous operations with the promises so promises are widely used for tasks like making networking requests, some real-time examples. You're writing some op uh, files, doing some write operations or reading some content from the files or other operations that don't block the main thread, like calling the network APIs or network request and everything. And then some request is giving you some, taking some time to give you the response, but other APIs are uh, quickly running fine. So in that case, we can use the promises very systematically and it will give you more readable code a promise represent a value that may not be available yet but it will be resolved at some point in the future so promise will say yes okay fine the right now the value is not available with me but i promise you that i will return something to you at least if it's an error i'll give you the error if the value is available i'll give the value to you so that's why there are three states in the promises if someone is asking you at a time of interview the first one is a pending fulfilled and the rejected. So once a promise is completely fulfilled or rejected, it is considered settled and its state cannot be changed. It means either it is, it can be fulfilled. It means it can be resolved. It has a value. It will give it to you or it can be rejected also. So that's why the promise is pending. Initially, when we declared right now, the, let's see a promise is pending from my side. And then I say, okay, now it is fulfilled and not it is rejected it means i will give you some error or you can catch that error or then after getting the error if you really want to show that error to the user or something you can do that and when we get the data with the help of fulfilled or once the promise is completely resolved or fulfilled then i can represent the data to the user for example let's take a very basic example over here i took this image from the google okay let's take this one ko underwood a promise to make a cake for you for your birthday and after two weeks ko is healthy and then ko is giving okay uh, the cake to his friend or her friend that okay yeah the cake is ready and then his her friend is like yeah cake is ready and i'm happy and either way i'm going to have a party but let's see the ko this guy and uh, is not healthy or ko is sick and there is no cake and i'm sad it means i could not fulfill the promise that i made it that okay i'm gonna make a cake for you then in that case the ko is sick could not fulfill but still the we will still have a party over here right so the promises same way works like that only that whatever the promise that you have done it can be fulfilled also it can be rejected also here perfect so that's why it's having the two major state one is the resolve with a value and rejected with a reason that tell me why it got rejected over here especially with the asynchronous call asynchronous operation promises are way to handle asynchronous operation in javascript that we have already discussed they provide a structure for managing and chaining asynchronous task right so we will see that practically how exactly asynchronous operations are getting handled with the promises the state wise also we have seen that pending fulfilled and rejected they start in the pending state always remember as i told you that start with the pending and then it depends on the logic that you have written and what kind of value or reason on the basis of that it will be fulfilled or rejected if it is failing okay once the fulfill or rejected is available then there are two other methods we are going to use the promises use dot then and the dot catch method to specify a callback for when the promises is fulfilled or rejected 
This promotes a more structured and the readable code flow. So if you see this particular code here, that let's see, I have created one promise. So forget, first of all, that the promise is what the promise is a kind of class in JavaScript. And we are creating the constructor of the class, or you can say instance of the class and is taking two parameters, two function parameters, resolve and reject. And we are storing in some variable, let's see my promise that I have created. And then I have some business logic, like some asynchronous operation. If it is successfully done, call the resolve with the result. If error, then call the reject with the error. So the promise code that we will write it here. And once the promise is ready, then we can say that this is my promise dot then, then is the handler that what exactly if the successful is promise is successfully done or it is resolved, then then method will get the result and handle the fulfilled promise. And if there is an error, handle the rejected promise with the reason that what exactly the reason behind that it could not be fulfilled or it got rejected. Promises can be easily chained together using dot then. So you must have seen this similar kind of code that, okay, you are getting some promise and then let's see promise zero that you have defined. You're getting the output from this promise. And with the help of then you can create a sequence or chaining sequence. Also, you can create that. So this is promise one, promise two, promise three, and you can write multiple then zero, then one, then two, then uh, three number of then method blocks. You can write it and then you can just create a complete asynchronous operation in the chaining concept. You can also use it over here, right? And then error handling promises have built in error handling via dot catch. So you don't need to write or you don't need to create any separate method for catch and making it easy to handle and propagate errors in the asynchronous code. So let's see if you are having 10 different lines of code that you have written. And if some of the promises are not getting handled properly or getting rejected, then you can easily handle with the catch block. If the promises are getting resolved, then you can handle with the then block here. There are other features also in the promises that we will see that what do you mean by async, await, and then promise.raise and promise.all and everything that we will see in the next chapter. But let's see today that how to create a, a promise. Just like that, we took some examples here and then we will see that if the promise is rejected or resolved, how to handle it in the in your JavaScript code. Okay, so let's go to your uh, Visual Studio code. And what exactly I'm going to do it here that I'm going to create one file here. So let's say I'm going to create that uh, promise concept.js. And this is the one file that I have created. And uh, here, one basic example that I'm going to take it here is, for example, first of all, that I'm going to create, let's see, with the help of new keyword, I'm going to create a promise class object here, right? Or you can say a constructor also we can create it. When you create the object, the constructor will be called. So new promise. Okay. So it says that promise constructor that we are going to call it here. And then here it will take uh, two parameters. One is the result and the reject. You can say that resolve and the reject. So you can write any method name that doesn't matter, but generally the standard we always write. Okay, fine. You give me two function parameters resolve and the reject over here. Okay, that you can say these are my callback functions also. We are supplying it here. Okay. Now after that, I'm putting a semicolon here. And then I'm writing one asynchronous operation that is set timeout method. Set timeout method that we have already discussed many times that it is a asynchronous a function. Set timeout say, okay, fine. That you do, you write your code here and that code will be executing after, let's see, uh, 2000 milliseconds or 1000 milliseconds or something like this. It means we are giving a delay of two seconds. Okay. So delay of uh, two seconds here. Now I'm taking some basic example. For example, let's see here, I'm creating one, uh, let's see random value. I'm fetching it with the help of a math class dot random method is available here. So math dot random. And whatever, some generating some random number here. And then when the random number is generated, I'm putting one if condition and I'm writing that if the random value, if it is greater than 0 0.5, see this carefully, it means I got the result correctly. So for example, let's see if the random number is one, one is greater than 0 0.5, then I want to call this particular resolve method. It means I want to fulfill my promise. Okay. So I'll say, okay, fine. Resolve. So you don't need to create this resolve method. 
JavaScript will create this resolve method at the runtime. And I just supply that, okay, fine. I got this value and you take this value, which value the random value. This is what exactly we discussed that if the value is available, you give me that and then fulfill that. Okay. See this with a value and resolve it. So we are going to call this resolve and whatever the random value is available, we are just giving to that else. If the value is not greater than 0 0.5, then I want to reject this. So how will you reject this? Then I'm going to call this reject callback function that you are passing it here, reject method. I'm going to call it here and then I'm going to supply an error message. So I'm just going to create the error class object with a message that a uh, value is uh, too, let's see, small here like this. Okay, value is too small. Perfect. So let's see, this is the rejection part also that we have given and delay of two seconds. So this is the asynchronous operation that we have written. So I'll write it for us. This is my async operation. Okay. Now this is a promise that we have created. Now we just need to use this particular promise. How to use that? So I'm just going to uh, store this entire promise in some constant variable. So for example, let's say I'm going to write that something here that, okay, constant, this is my random, a number promise, which is equal to this. You can write it like this also, or like this. So this is a random number promise that I have created. Now I'm going to use this. And now this is actually returning me what? So this is exactly returned with this. And when I use this random promise, I can just simply use the method like dot then over here. It means if the, first of all, this particular method, uh, I'm writing the random number promise, this particular promise will be called and it's calling this asynchronous operation. And then it's getting some result random value after two seconds of delay and random value. If it is greater than 0 0.5, then it will go to the then block. And then I'm storing it some result over here like this. You can write result value, any variable name that you can write it here. That's not an issue. And then I'm supplying with the help of this callback function once again. And let's say I really want to print this particular result over here, that console uh, dot log. And then here I'm writing that, uh, let's see, promise is fulfilled with a value and whatever the value that we are going to store in the result part. So this random value will be given to this result. And then I'm printing it on the console here. Perfect. If it is not fulfilled, fulfilled, and then it will go to the rejection part and means the else part, then I can write a catch block also here or catch here like this or catch function handler. Also, we can write it here Then I'm going to store in some error variable. And then again, I'm writing a callback function with the arrow here. And then I'm writing that uh, console dot not confirm console dot error. You can print it or console log also if you really want to print, but let's say I'm printing with console dot error. And here I'm saying the promise, your promise is rejected. Okay. With whatever the error that you're supplying. So here I'm supplying value is uh, too uh, small. This entire message that I'm going to give it to catch block. And then whatever the error that you are getting it, I'm just going to print it here with the comma here. The same thing with the result also that I'm printing with the comma, not with the plus. Okay. So whatever the error object that you are passing, the same error object will be used over here and that's it. Okay. So this is just a simple code that we have written and uh, let's see how exactly it is working now. So I'll do one thing. I'm just going to call this in the JS practice. Now I'm going to write that uh, promise concept.js. Okay. See, it's after two seconds, the promise is getting executed and it's saying that the number that you are getting, which is actually maybe less than 0 0.5. That's why saying the promise is rejected with this particular error. If you really want to print that number, that number also we can print it along with this error. That's also okay. But uh, let's run it multiple times. Okay. So let me just clear the console here. Let's see after two seconds, it's saying, yeah, this time promise is fulfilled. And the value that we are passing it here, that is 0 0.535 which is actually greater than 0 0.5 over here, right? So let's run it once again. So after two seconds, asynchronous operation is handling and this time the value is uh, too small here. So let's run it again. So keep running it every time it will give generate some random number. See now the next number is 0 0.92 here, 
which is actually greater than 0.5. Let's run it again. Yeah, so again, error is coming because value is too small here. So likewise, you can just keep checking and then you can check here that again, error is coming here because of number is uh, too small. So this is just a simple basic example that we have uh, written. Later on, whenever it lets you are calling one API with the help of fetch method, which is again a asynchronous operation, or you are doing some read write operation on a specific file, you are reading the content or writing the content in a particular text file or in some Excel file or any CSV file or any flat file that you are reading it, that is again a asynchronous operation. If the error is there while reading that particular file, you can just simply call the reject or handle it with the catch. If the completely done, then you can handle it with the then also here. So these are my handlers. I'm writing it here. This is my handler and the catch is also a kind of handler function that we have written. So I hope this is clear now. Promises are very, very important and very easy to understand. Also, if you know the things, if you know the concept. So that's all for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.